I'm Micah with Uptop Overland. We get a lot of questions because we make different series of roof racks for different vehicles. We've got a Bravo and an Alpha. Currently, we're about to release this uh, Zulu that you see here behind me. And people want to know, what's the difference? Which one should I buy? Why do you make so many damn roof racks? Why are there so many options? So we're going to go over a bunch of that information today to help you narrow down the decision and pick the rack that's the best for you. So a quick breakdown of this if you will so this truck here it's the third gen tacoma this is a bravo roof rack it's only available in black right if you come over here this guy has an alpha on it and we've color matched the inside of that roof rack that's one of the benefits when you get into the alpha and the zulu they have multiple components to the rack so that we can really play with the color matching and the powder coating to give it an individualized look that suits your vehicle this truck, also third gen Tacoma, has the new Zulu rack on it. To start by talking about the Bravo rack. It's definitely our number one seller because it hits a price point that everybody can get down with. So how do you make a roof rack that performs like this but, but still doesn't cost an arm and a leg to buy? The number one answer is you pick the right materials, you get cross compatibility through major components between all of your roof racks, and you stick to a single wall construction like we did on the Bravo roof rack. If you look, we're following the profile of the vehicle just like we do on the Alpha. We leave a nice gap underneath there so that if you overload the rack or while you're off-road, if, if it takes a serious shot, it's not going to do any damage to the exterior of the vehicle. It's got the same crossbars going across the top. So if we follow this line where you see this hardware here, every spot that you see that there's a crossbar that goes across that vehicle. And that's where he's got his storage cases, max tracks, stuff like that all attached to so this Bravo has our optional grab handles added to it. The Bravo racks don't actually ship with grab handles, but they can be added at any time. You can buy them in pairs, including our new grab handle that we just released. They'll also work with this. But all of the Bravo racks do have the machined holes so that you don't have to drill anything in order to add them. When you look at the side of a Bravo roof rack, you'll notice somewhere towards the front and the rear of the roof rack, you're going to have these little punch outs here. These holes are for our optional rock lights so there's a injection molded pod and then a rock light that goes inside of it and when it mounts into the side of the roof it's angled down a little bit to project onto the trailer the campsite and you can add them just by simply cutting out this little tongue here and here and then that pod will flush mount right inside of there and then you mount it with two screws that's going to bring us up to the windscreen. So the windscreen is the piece that you see here at the front of the vehicle. Now, this truck doesn't have aftermarket lighting put in here, so it's completely solid. You'll notice on our website, you'll see a bunch of different cutouts and options. We've got a really good video that goes over all the different pieces and parts that you can put into these things for, for a little bit of lighting or going just, oh my God, crazy with as bright as you ever wanted to be. But if you look at the windscreen itself, it follows the profile of the vehicle underneath here, but it doesn't actually come into contact with it. it it's a big deal to us that, that all of the roof racks mount to factory locations whenever possible, and that the roof racks don't actually come into contact with the vehicle. So the next feature with the windscreen, because we, we, we spend a lot of time working on these things, different angles, different slopes, different cuts across the top, trying to make these racks just as quiet as possible, right? Because y you're you're banging down a trail at 15 miles an hour that's not a big deal but you're going to take that same truck down the interstate at 75 or 80 miles an hour the racks have to be quiet they can't vibrate they can't add any induced noise to your ride that you couldn't drown out with the stereo nobody wants to drive around like that so if you pay attention to our splitter it's got an angle going down and an angle going here so this angle catches oncoming wind shoots it down underneath the roof of the vehicle and allows it to go over the top of the truck just like the vehicle would if it didn't have a roof rack on it 
Now this upper wing here that's going back at the same angle as the front of the roof rack, this expels wind and pushes it up over the roof rack so that you can try and stay quiet once you've got this thing loaded with gear. So that pretty much sums up what makes a Bravo rack a Bravo. We've got to show you this guy to get you in the mindset of our Alpha and Zulu racks because this really represents like the core of our DNA. We make a, a rugged, durable roof rack that'll hold a ton of weight that gives you a lot of options to grow lighting handles, lighting in the front, wiring harnesses, different mounts and brackets. They're all going to be compatible across the entire catalog. So everything starts with the Bravo. Now I need to show you the Alpha. Come on, Corey. Not bad, huh? This is an alpha. So today in this video, we're showing you specifically three G, uh, third generation Toyota Tacomas. We make these series of roof racks for, uh, I'd, I'd have to look, but I think it's 35 or 40 different vehicles at this point. The alpha rack builds off of the Bravo, right? So they use a lot of the same parts, the windscreen, the crossbars, and the feet. Those are the same between both series of roof racks. But if we get up in here in the corner, you're gonna see something very different on the Alpha Rack. This outside armor, on this truck, it's black. With the Alphas, you can choose your color between this inside part and this outside part. So when you look on our website and you're, you're salivating, trying to get this order in and you wanna get everything placed and you're going down that little drop down menu and it says inner outer, this is exactly what it's asking you. Do you want that color match on the inside of the rack or on the outside of the rack? The reverse of that, whichever you pick, the other part of an alpha rack will always default to black. So just like the Bravo, the alpha racks are also pre-cut for the optional scene pods and rock lights, but the handles, these come standard on an alpha rack. Um, just like with the Bravos on the trucks, you'll usually get four on the SUVs, you should get six. So now I'm going to take this Allen wrench and I'm going to pull the side off this rack and we're going to show you what the inside of this really looks like. With that outside armor peeled off, we can really start to look at the inside of what makes an Alpha rack. This is the piece that we refer to as the Groove Tech. On this truck, you can see it's machined. It's, it's a way different profile than the outside armor, right? Like it's inside, it's notched for those rock lights. You can see where the armor attaches. This gives you a really good look at the feet and how they attach to the front of the roof rack. This attachment method in this foot, this is the exact same on an Alpha as it is on a Bravo. So we still use a bent steel foot right here. Very rigid, there's never gonna be any movement. I mean, we're moving the whole truck, right? So if you follow back, these areas right here, this is for dropping in a bungee cord to temporarily lash gear to the top of the roof rack. Paddle boards, uh, big items that are bulky like swag tents, stuff like that. You can throw them up here. You don't have to mount anything. You can just simply lock a bungee in here, flip it over to the other side, pull it down, and we've given you a bunch of locations to do that across the whole rack. Just like the Bravo, you're following across here. You've got your crossbar bolts. This would be a good place to get a good look at what an actual crossbar is. So this rack's built with seven of these on the Alpha, six on the Bravo. But if you look at them, they have grooves on the top, there's grooves on the side, there's also grooves on the bottom that'll be really hard to see in this video. All those grooves are compatible with all of our mounts, brackets, hardware. That's how you actually anchor things like, what is this, a bike rack on this one or a kayak? Yeah, so this one's got a kayak rack mounted to it. And it simply just got hardware dropped into that channel. And then this anchors down so everything's nice and secure. Another key difference is that the alpha racks are compatible with our quick wire wiring harnesses. One of the things that I think scares a lot of people off from adding lighting and things like that to their vehicle is that it's just, it's absolutely terrifying. How do I hook this up? Where do I connect it to? What switching system do I use? How do I get the wires from up here to into the truck, right? 
So we make a whole series of harnesses that are literally designed to snap into holes. If you follow along here, like on this particular rack, see these little holes here? So your harness would arrive to you, you would take it out of the package, it's gonna have some little push plastic trees on it and it would just snap right into those holes and run the whole length of the rack. Then you can route over to the other side by going through these open channels. It hides the wiring in the crossbars, keeps it concealed and protected. You can wire an alpha rack in just about an hour. It's really not that difficult to do, especially when you use something like our quick wire. Just like the Bravo rack, when we showed you the windscreen, you're following the same profile. You're not touching the vehicle. This part number in an alpha rack is the exact same part number as it is in the Bravo. You're not making concessions from one rack to the other. You're just taking advantage that the alpha rack was built way more geared towards lighting and things of that nature. So the rack is built to hide and conceal all that and just give you cosmetic looks that you cannot get with the other racks. So I hope that clears up the difference between the Bravo and the Alpha Rack. Now obviously they come in at two completely different price points. You have to understand that the Alpha Racks have a lot more machining with that second inside part. The materials are thicker, they take longer to do, um, and there's just a, there's a lot of engineering in the Alpha Rack. It was actually designed first. We launched with the Alpha and then we released the Bravo because you cannot just, as it turns out, you can make something that looks really awesome but it's hard to come to market with a roof rack that's twice as expensive as everything else. So we had to take what we had learned with the Alpha and then go, okay, so how do you scale this down into something that, that everybody can afford? And that was how we came up with the Bravo. So we've gone over those two. Now we're gonna go talk about the bad boy, the, the new new, right, the, the Zulu. Um, it's important to note at this point that Bravo and Alpha racks are made of aluminum. The whole inside uh, body pieces and things of that nature, they're all aluminum. Now the feet are steel just because that gives you a better weight ratio, better weight capacity than an aluminum foot and it'll also take more abuse long term than aluminum wheel. But when we get into the Zulu rack, we're going to show you something that we, we don't think anybody's ever used this for a roof rack like this before in mass production. So we've, we've been at this for f four years now at this point, and we, we've made a lot of roof racks and a lot of bed racks. And in, in the background, churning the whole time, you're learning things about your business and your system, like you know your production and how it's packed and, and how many of something that you can make and how long it takes. Um, the whole time we were doing this, You've got this idea in your head for this, man, I wish we would have built that instead of, of this. But the reality was at the time when we started, we didn't have the equipment. We didn't have the experience. We didn't have the tooling to make something like this. Um, the second you get your hands on some new capabilities, you want to push the limits, right? Like that's where the ute came from, the big flatbed thing that you guys are seeing released from us. The Zulu is very much the same thing. When, when you gain the capability to manipulate different materials, you, you naturally are gonna wanna see what you can do with that material. And the material that we've chosen for the Zulu rack, the, the inner parts that you see behind me that are in black back here that are formed and look really gnarly, that's all 304 stainless steel. So the first thing that's gonna catch your eye when you see the Zulu is, is definitely gonna be that formed side. So it's not just flat anymore, right? Like it comes up and it angles over and then it flips to the top. Where on our other roof racks, the load bars, or cross bars, they anchor into the side right here. On the Zulu, they're all mounted from the top. It keeps this very sleek, and in my opinion, it makes it easier to adjust and move these load bars around in the slots because when you Tighten up all that hardware, no matter how careful you are, you're gonna mar that roof rack finish on the outside. So say six months from now, you needed to move that crossbar to realign on another piece of gear, you could always tell where that hardware was. 
So in thinking about that with the Zulu racks, we move that to the top to keep it concealed and hidden. And with it being stainless steel, just like aluminum, it's not gonna rust. So even if it scratches it up here after you move the crossbars around, you don't have to worry about the rack starting to degrade. So up on top of the Zulu, you'll start to see some major differences between the Zulu and the Alpha and the Bravo rack. On the Bravo and the Alpha, we showed you guys the feet and they mount to the vehicle and then they come out and then they fold up and then the sides of the rack are attached to that. On the Zulus, if you look down inside of here, everything's anchored inside of the drip rail and then there's a two-piece foot. So we're almost a half inch thick here when all this is mounted together. And then they're formed up and they actually support the load bars to move the weight distribution into the inside of the drip rails of the vehicle, which makes the rack just exponentially stronger and able to hold way more gear. In most locations throughout the roof rack, you still have the ability to rotate the, the load bars between horizontal and vertical. In the Tacoma, you can mount the rear load bar horizontally so that it falls behind that factory shark fin antenna and it sits just above it. So if you're loading gear up here, one, your antenna is still exposed to the sky. So your, your XM, your FM, all that's still gonna get good stuff, but it's also protected. So if you needed to throw a sheet of lumber up here, you're not gonna have to worry about scoring the top of that antenna with that sheet good. You've got full compatibility with the sunroof. That's gonna be the open close function as well as the vent with no additional parts on the Zulu rack. So you don't require like the fresh air like you do in the Alpha. Now the windscreen on the Zulu may look like the Alpha and the Bravo. Once you learn about vehicle aerodynamics and what's gonna be a really quiet ride, you don't really stray from that, that, that shape. But the way this mounts is completely different than the other roof racks. On the Alpha and Bravo, that, that's three bends per windscreen. So you have this bend at the bottom and then you have the two ears on the side that mount them into the roof rack. On the Zulu, there's a crossbar at the front of the roof rack and the windscreen actually mounts to that. It keeps the roof rack completely sealed out here at the corners instead of having a little gap for air to get through. This truck's got our 38 inch light bar installed in here but you don't have to select which windscreen you want specifically in the Zulu roof racks. You are, you are selecting the type of brackets that you would like to have. So when you see our drop down menu on a Zulu and it's saying no cut or up to 40 inch light bar, you're gonna get this windscreen. You're also gonna get this piece here, which I can't set in with this light bar here, but it keys in and mounts to that same front crossbar so that you can you can swap back and forth between cut and no cut. This is a big deal to us because back during COVID when light bars took months to get, guys are ordering windscreens that are cut for a light bar, can't get the light bar, and the whole time it's installed, wind's just passing through those holes, just making noise and driving people crazy. So we thought kind of a hybrid windscreen where you could decide what you wanted to do and when you wanted to do it was a really cool idea that we incorporated into the Zulu. And I think that you'll start to see that in the Alpha and Bravo racks throughout 2023 and 2024. You've got some options on brackets. Now, all of the windscreens for the Zulus will naturally ship with these two brackets that you see here, which would allow you to mount the light bar to the front of the front load bar or to the load bar that the windscreen's mounted, and they're adjustable. So you can move things up and down or in or out. And we've got a whole series of brackets for the LPs from uh, Baja Designs, for Diode Dynamics, for Heretic, for all the big name light companies out there. And the last really cool feature for the windscreen on the Zulu is on the Tacoma, if you see that little notch right there, that's for the uptake. Just like the Bravo and Alpha, all the Zulu racks are ready to have optional scene pods and rock lights installed in the sides. And the Zulus all ship with our brand new handles. So you've got your urethane grippers, your mounting location, and your aluminum injection handles for the Zulu racks. Mounted directly to that formed inside stainless steel piece is an aluminum piece of cosmetic armor that goes on the outside. This is the piece on a Zulu rack that can be color matched to your vehicle.
The last thing to talk about on the Zulu rack is how you're able to incorporate the wiring inside the rack body like you can on the Alpha racks. We've got some really cool brackets made that bolt to the interior hardware inside of the Zulu that allow you to put brackets throughout the inside of the rack to mount and distribute the wiring and cable for all the crazy lighting systems that you guys all use. So I hope this helps you guys see the difference between the products that we make, Bravo, Alpha, Zulu. Um, I, I don't know how many more we're gonna have eventually, but for now we're, we're a roof rack company with three different roof racks that really does spawn out of interacting with so many people over the, over the amount of time that we've been here and, and designing products that fit certain lifestyles, certain budgets, and, and that can grow with you as your needs change. So if you guys have any questions on the, which rack would be perfect for you, you wanna see my ugly face again, you just wanna to talk to Corey and the guys upstairs, you can call us Monday through Friday from eight to 5 p.m. You can email us 24 seven at support at uptopoverland.com. Uh, buy some racks, go out there and get camping.